Hello everyone, I am Mohammed Hamama, and welcome to your ASCP preparation camp. In this camp, we will cover all the topics on the ASCP lecture list. In this video, we will explore the abundant components of the circulating proteome. But before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel, activate the notifications, and hit the like button for this video. Let's dive in. Lipoproteins, the body's fat transporters. Lipoproteins are specialized transport vehicles in the blood, responsible for carrying essential molecules like cholesterol, triglycerides, and phospholipids throughout the body. Structure and subtypes. Protein core, lipid shell, these complexes have a core made of protein surrounded by a shell of various lipids. The specific ratio of protein to lipid and the types of lipids involved determine the different classifications of lipoproteins. Major lipoprotein classes Chylomicrons, largest transport dietary fats absorbed from the intestines. Very low density lipoproteins, VLDL, deliver triglycerides synthesized by the liver to various tissues. Intermediate density lipoproteins, IDL an intermediate stage in lipoprotein metabolism. Low-density lipoproteins, LDL often referred to as bad cholesterol because they deliver cholesterol to body tissues. High LDL levels are a risk factor for atherosclerosis, plaque buildup in arteries. Lipoprotein A, LP, A, similar to LDL but with an additional protein molecule, LP, A, may increase cardiovascular risk. High-density lipoproteins, HDL often called good cholesterol because they transport cholesterol back to the liver for disposal. HDL helps to remove excess cholesterol from tissues, promoting cardiovascular health. Identifying lipoproteins on electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is a technique used to separate proteins in a blood sample based on their size and electrical charge. Lipoproteins can be visualized on an electrophoresis test, often called protein electrophoresis or HRE, based on their migration patterns. HDL moves between the albumin and alpha-1 globulin zones. VLDL appears at the beginning of the beta-globulin fraction, pre-beta. LDL shows up as a distinct band within the beta-globulin region. By measuring and interpreting the levels of different lipoproteins, healthcare professionals can gain valuable insights into a patient's risk for cardiovascular disease and other health conditions. Complement system, your body's built-in bug zappers. Made in the liver, ready for action, the liver manufactures proteins called complement proteins, but keeps them inactive until they're needed. These proteins circulate in your blood like undercover agents, waiting for a signal to attack. Two ways to fight, there are two main ways to activate the complement system. O antibody alarm, if antibodies, disease fighters made by your immune system, spot a pathogen, germ, they tag it for destruction. This triggers a chain reaction, cascade, of complement proteins that poke holes in the pathogen's surface, lysing, bursting, it. O direct attack, some pathogens have suspicious molecules on their surface. These molecules can directly set off the complement cascade, leading to lysis without needing antibodies. C3 and C4, important players. C3 is the most abundant complement protein and gets used up in both fighting methods. C4 is the second most common, and its levels dropping specifically point to problems in the antibody alarm system. Levels and what they mean. Up often happens during inflammation or tissue injury as your body fights back. Down may indicate malnutrition, anemia, autoimmune diseases, or certain infections. Testing complement levels. Fancy techniques like nephilometry and turbidimetry can measure C3 and C4 levels in your blood. Fibrinogen, the clot-forming glue. Big molecule, big job, fibrinogen is one of the biggest proteins in your blood plasma, made by the liver. Sugar-coated protein, it's a glycoprotein, meaning it has some sugar molecules attached. On protein electrophoresis, fibrinogen migrates to a distinct band located between the beta and gamma globulin regions. Transformation into fibrin clots, 
fibrinogen's primary function lies in its conversion to fibrin, an insoluble protein essential for clot formation. Fibrin polymers form a mesh-like structure that traps blood cells and platelets, effectively sealing wounds and preventing blood loss. Depletion during clotting because fibrinogen is actively consumed during clot formation, it is typically absent or present at very low concentrations in blood serum, the fluid remaining after blood clotting. Fibrinogen level assessment Traditionally, clot formation time tests measured the time it takes for plasma to clot in the presence of thrombin, a coagulation factor. However, more specific assays are now employed to measure fibrinogen concentration directly. Fibrin degradation products, remnants of fibrin breakdown, can also be measured to assess overall clotting activity. Acute phase reactant, fibrinogen is classified as an acute phase reactant, signifying that its levels demonstrably increase during inflammation. Pregnancy and hormonal contraceptives can also influence fibrinogen concentrations. Clinical significance of low fibrinogen Low fibrinogen levels can be indicative of disseminated intravascular coagulation, DIC, a condition characterized by widespread blood clot formation throughout the vasculature. This can lead to complications such as bleeding and organ damage. C-reactive protein, CRP the body's early warning system for trouble. Inflammation alarm, CRP is a protein that jumps into action very quickly whenever there's inflammation or tissue damage in your body. It doesn't matter what caused the problem, infection, injury, you name it, CRP is one of the first responders. Helping out the immune system, CRP can latch onto bacteria and fungi, making them easier targets for immune cells to gobble them up. This is called opsonization, and it's like putting a big, eat me, sign on bad guys for your immune system. The link to heart disease, Research suggests high CRP levels might be connected to chronic inflammation in arteries, which can lead to fatty buildup, atherosclerosis. This increases your risk of heart disease. CRP and blood clotting. High CRP might also make your blood more likely to clot and promote the buildup of bad cholesterol, LDL, on artery walls. Beyond infection, a broader role. Studies are exploring possible links between high CRP and other health problems like colon cancer, diabetes complications, and even the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Keeping tabs on inflammation, normally, CRP levels are very low in your blood. If they're above 1 mg per deciliter, it's a sign of something going on, like an infection or inflammation. In severe cases, CRP can skyrocket to over 10 mg per deciliter. Monitoring treatment, doctors can use CRP levels to see if treatment for inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis is working. But it's important to know that even with known inflammation, a low CRP doesn't always mean there's no problem. CRP tests, traditional versus high sensitivity, fancy tests like nephilometry and EIA measure CRP levels. A newer type of test called high-sensitivity CRP, HSCRP, is even more powerful. HSCRP, unlike traditional CRP tests, HSCRP can detect much lower levels of CRP, as low as 1 mg per liter. This helps uncover subtle, chronic inflammation that older tests might miss. HSCRP and your heart health HSCRP levels can be a valuable clue to your future risk of cardiovascular disease, CVD. Here's a quick breakdown. Less than 1 mg per liter, low risk. 1 to 3 mg per liter, moderate risk. Greater than 3 mg per liter, high risk. HSCRP and predicting future events, high HSCRP levels might predict. Recurrent heart attacks in people with angina or a previous heart attack. O lower survival rates in patients with severe heart problems. O increased risk of blocked arteries coming back after angioplasty, procedure to open blocked arteries. Antibodies, your body's customized defenders. How antibodies work. Made by B cells, B cells are like immune system factories that produce antibodies. Triggered by matches, when AB cells surface receptor bumps into a specific molecule, antigen, like a germ, it activates. 
B-cell factories, the activated B-cell multiplies and matures into plasma cells, which are antibody-making machines. Antibody structure, antibodies are Y-shaped proteins with different parts for recognition and attack. Five main classes, each with a job. Oh there are five major antibody classes, IgG, IgA, IgM, IgD, and IgA, each with a specific function. Oh the class depends on the type of heavy chain, H chain, the antibody has. Recognizing invaders, the variable region of the antibody, especially in the H chain, allows it to recognize a specific antigen with amazing precision, like a lock and key. Light chain variety, light chains, kappa and lambda, add another layer of diversity to antibodies. Taking down threats, the constant region, FC, of the antibody interacts with other immune system components. Complement attack, some antibodies can trigger a protein cascade, complement system, to destroy pathogens. Gobbling up germs, phagocyte immune cells have receptors that grab the FC region, helping them engulf and eliminate germs coated in antibodies. Neutralizing toxins, antibodies can directly bind to toxins or viruses, preventing them from harming your cells. Mucosal defense, IgA antibodies are champions at protecting surfaces like your airway and intestines from germs. Antibody teamwork. First response, when you encounter a new antigen, IgM antibodies are often the first responders. They're good at triggering the complement system. Stronger secondary response, if you meet the same antigen again, your body launches a stronger attack with IgG antibodies. These are the most common antibody type and have various functions. Other important players, IgA guards your mucous membranes, IgA triggers allergies, and IgD's role is still being explored. Antibodies are like your body's custom-made defense team, with each type playing a crucial role in recognizing and eliminating specific threats. Immunoglobulin G, IgG the heavy hitter. Most common antibody, IgG makes up 70-75% to 75 of your circulating antibodies, acting as your immune system's workhorse. Y-shaped structure, it's a Y-shaped molecule with two heavy chains and two light chains, all linked together. Compared to other antibodies, IgG is a heavyweight. Subclasses and their functions, IgG can be further classified into four subclasses with distinct roles. O IgG1 and IgG3, excellent at triggering a powerful immune response through complement activation and attracting phagocytes to gobble up pathogens. IgG1 is special, it can even cross the placenta, protecting newborns until they can make their own antibodies. O IgG2, primarily targets bacterial infections but has weaker complement activation abilities. IgG4, lacks complement activation but plays other roles in the immune response. Long-lasting protection, IgG sticks around for a relatively long time, around 22 days, providing sustained protection. IgG1 is the champion in this category, offering crucial immunity to newborns. Levels and what they mean, Low IgG might indicate immunodeficiency, while high levels could suggest infection, protein loss, or certain cancers. Immunoglobulin M, IgM the early responder. First on the scene, IgM is one of the first antibodies produced by B cells, making it a key player in the early stages of the immune response. Two forms, it exists in two forms. B cell bound, a single molecule displayed on the surface of B cells. Circulating form, a large structure in the bloodstream made of five IgM molecules linked together, pentamer. Size matters, due to its large size, IgM has trouble entering tissues and cannot cross the placenta. Complement champion, IgM is highly efficient at activating the complement system, a critical part of the immune response. Levels and what they mean, low IgM might be associated with protein loss or certain immune deficiencies. High IgM levels can indicate infections caused by various viruses, bacteria, or parasites. IgA, the bodyguard of our sticky surfaces. Similar to IgG but specialized, IgA shares some features with IgG but is slightly heavier and has a shorter lifespan, around 6 days. 
Two key forms. O monomer, this form resembles IgG and comes in IgA1 and IgA2 subtypes. Dimer, IgA2 primarily forms dimers, which are more resistant to breakdown compared to IgA1 monomers. Dimers make up a smaller portion of circulating IgA. Serum IgA versus secretory IgA. Serum IgA, its exact role is less clear compared to other immunoglobulins. Secretory IgA, this form is the star player in protecting our mucosal surfaces like tears, saliva, sweat, and linings of the gut and airways. It's heavier due to a special attachment and is produced by specialized immune cells in those tissues. Protecting newborns, secretory IgA, particularly abundant in breast milk, helps shield newborns from infections in their developing gut. Complement and IgA, IgA can interact with the complement system, but its exact role in this process is still being explored. Levels and what they mean, low IgA might be associated with protein synthesis problems. High IgA can be seen in liver infections and autoimmune diseases. Immunoglobulin D, IgD the enigmatic immune player. Rare and mysterious, IgD makes up less than 1% of circulating antibodies and its exact function remains largely a mystery. Structure and location, it's a single unit molecule, monomer, similar in structure to IgG and is found on the surface of B lymphocytes. Possible roles. B cell receptor. Like IgM, IgD might act as a receptor for antigens on B cells. No other functions, its precise role in the immune system is still under investigation. Levels and what they mean, increased IgD levels can be associated with liver infections and connective tissue disorders. Immunoglobulin E, Ega the culprit behind allergies. Allergy alert, Ega is the antibody responsible for triggering allergic reactions. It's loaded with carbohydrates, 15%, and slightly heavier than IgG. Mast cell buddies, most Ega molecules don't circulate freely but cling tightly to mast cells throughout your body. How allergies happen? 1. Ega binds to mast cells, Ega molecules latch onto specific receptors on mast cells. 2. Allergen encounter, when an allergen, something you're allergic to, comes across an Ega molecule on a mast cell, it acts like a bridge, connecting two Ega molecules. 3. Chemical release. This connection triggers the mast cell to release powerful chemicals like histamine. 4. Allergic symptoms. Histamine and other chemicals cause blood vessel leakage, muscle contraction, and the familiar symptoms of allergies like runny nose, asthma attacks, hives, and eczema. Ega levels and allergies. Measuring Ega levels specific to certain allergens helps doctors identify allergies. People with allergies often have higher total Ega levels in their blood. Job syndrome, this rare condition involves excessive Ega production, leading to eczema, frequent infections, and very high Ega levels. Free light chains, leftovers from antibody production. Light chain leftovers, during antibody production, B cells may create slightly more light chains than needed for complete antibodies. These extras, called free light chains, circulate in the blood at tiny amounts. Healthy kidney removal, your kidneys normally filter these free light chains from your blood. Kappa versus Lambda. O Kappa, K, light chains are smaller and eliminated faster by the kidneys. O Lambda light chains are larger and tend to form clumps, slowing down their removal. The balancing act, despite higher K light chain production, lambda light chains are usually found in slightly higher concentrations due to their slower clearance. Except in cases of kidney problems. Light chain function, free light chains generally don't have a specific immune function on their own. Light chains and diagnosis. Measuring free light chain levels in the blood can be a valuable tool for diagnosing plasma cell disorders, where abnormal antibody production occurs. Don't keep all this valuable information to yourself, share it with your friends who might find it interesting and beneficial. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. We love hearing from our viewers and we will do our best to answer all your questions. And finally, don't forget to ask for our ASCP short notes to supplement your studying.
These notes are a great resource to help you review and retain the information we cover in our videos.